you were always, when you were Defense Secretary, a skeptic of the European Defense Agency, for example, uh, as well as the, the EU project as a whole, and there's, there was no mystery about that. Um, the government has come out with a new policy that says, that sort of anchors and says that Europe is still key to European, um, that to Europe is still key to British defense, and that Britain will continue to play an important European uh, role. We just spoke to Sir Michael Fallon, the Defense Secretary, uh, your successor, and he made the point that, look, we're geographically here. But what about the role of the EDA in cooperation and taking advantage of EU programs? There is talk that the government wants to continue to do that. I, I could see how the EU would be somewhat less uh, interested in that. What's, how do you thread that, that needle um, of sort of separation but being connected, but also try to take advantage of some of these programs? Well, well Europe is a continent with independent nations with a their own proud histories and traditions and cultures. The European Union is a short-term political construct, so we mustn't ever conflate the two. Uh, and of course, European continental security is vital for the United Kingdom, so we'll want to continue to play our part in that, both as a key and senior member of NATO, um, but also what we do in terms of the industrial base across Europe. And we will want to cooperate in terms of mutual security. Um, the, the bottom line is that the UK has enormous capability, but we've got enormous capability because we spend on defence. And uh, our European partners, whether those are European partners currently in the European Union or European partners who are part of NATO, will still be faced with the same basic problem, which is unless you spend on defence, you don't get defence. One of the big topics of conversation is the prioritisation or the mini SDSR that's going through. You presided over a very difficult SDSR that tried to bridge that giant black hole. And there are those who look at this as a new black hole has emerged that the government's going to have to deal with. Um, and it's, it's a good time to have three former defense secretaries who are on the cabinet at the same time, Philip Hammond, yourself, and, and Michael Fallon. It's a two-part question. Part one of the question is, is there a concern that, that defense cuts would impact your ability for defense exports, which is such a key part of your agenda? Well, the difference, of course, now in, between now and 2010 is in 2010 we had a, a publicly admitted uh, black hole in the defence budget that we inherited of about £39 billion. Uh, we also had an economy that was on its knees uh, and uh, we had to deal with all of that. So at that 2010 SDSR we had to remove um, more than we would have liked to provide us with growth uh, as we move towards 2020. We're now seeing some of those pro projects uh, alive and we've been looking at some of them here today. Um, and we've got a growing economy um, with uh, rising employment and falling unemployment. So it's a very different economic backdrop. We're therefore much more able to deal with some of those uh, difficulties coming. And of course, we made some of the very difficult decisions back uh, in 2010 that make any alterations subsequently easier to do. So you think it's going to be a fraction as difficult now as it was back then? Oh, I don't think anyone's ever going to go through the, uh, the, the horrors that we had back in, in 2010. To have to conduct a defence review when none has been conducted for 12 years, when we inherited a £39 black, a billion pounds black hole in the budget at a time when the economy was flat and we were being asked to make 7% reductions in the defence budget. Um, that, that, was a, that was a whole bit of uh, a magic act that I hope no one has to do again. If I Can I just ask one very brief one? What about the rest of the trade agenda? You have a whole series of policies and programs you've come in to take a much more strategic view to international trade. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, we want to see the United Kingdom uh, broadening its global trading uh, footprint. Uh, we have a number of working groups around the world at the present time for when we leave the European Union to see how we might liberalise that trade. For example, if you've got a UK economy that's 80% service driven, we'll need to see liberalisation in the global service economy if we're to maximise the potential for the UK. But as we've seen here at DSEI and elsewhere, there's an enormous appetite for joint ventures with the United Kingdom, people looking at us as being the world leaders in, in design, innovation, project management, and that's before we even add on our financial services and insurance. So we are a top global partner. Um, people are looking for the UK to partner, and so are we, and that's going to be a very, very useful combination. Including in medicine. Sorry, thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much. Pleasure.